there's actually really great research on beats improving race time performance in runners and in bikers. There are a number of benefits to caffeine use. The main one is that you're gonna improve the amount of antioxidants that you're getting in a day. But really, you could also get more antioxidants from your diet. You could just eat more fruits and vegetables and you'd have the same benefit. So it is a benefit, but it's kind of cheap. Second is you're gonna get more polyphenols. Again, plant compounds that you could get just through your diet. Another benefit is that you're going to increase alertness. Now, we really do want this if you're going to run, if you're going to race, if you're going to do something fast or lift some weights, but you can also increase your alertness. How else? Through, you know what it is, sleep. For goodness sake, we could just sleep more. Elite distance runners, I have a chapter on this in my book, and most elite runners, they sleep twice a day, and they get a total of somewhere between 10 and 12 hours of sleep per day. Now, they're also doing this full time, so maybe you don't need to sleep quite that much, but more than five or six, maybe you only need eight or eight and a half or something, but it's probably more. The point is, if you need the coffee in the morning every day and you can't skip it and you don't feel like you're alive until you've had it, then probably you're not getting enough sleep. You also might be addicted to the caffeine, but you probably got addicted to it from not sleeping enough. So there are benefits. We also talked about the benefits to your one mile time trial about plus, well, about minus six seconds in the research. Um, also with uh, weightlifting and also with the marathon through fat metabolism. So there really are benefits. Should you have caffeine? I guess it's up to you. What, what I'm gonna share with you here is how many negative things that happen and you can decide if it's worth it or not. But then the real holy grail here, the thing that I'm really proud of is I'm gonna show you how to get these benefits without the negative side effects and you can still have your coffee. You like that, don't you? Okay, <laughs> but some of the negative effects, there are many. Well, when you drink caffeine, you're going to decrease the quality and the quantity of your sleep even having coffee just in the morning. Caffeine has a seven hour half-life. Seven hours, which means seven hours after you drink a cup of coffee, you still have a half a cup of coffee worth of caffeine in your body. 14 hours later, you still have a quarter of that cup of coffee. So even at noon, if you have one cup of coffee, at 2 a.m., it's as it's like you drank a quarter of a cup of coffee at 2 a.m. It's insane. So really, it's going to impact your sleep no matter what. Number two is that it's going to increase your blood pressure, perhaps chronically and perhaps in a pathologic way that can kill you. Number three is that it's going to increase your risk of having a heart attack. Seriously, check out this research here, which shows that coffee intake and the risk of MI is my myocardial infarction. So this is a heart attack. And if you're a slow metabolizer, it goes up significantly. And any amount of coffee with caffeine is going to in increase your risk of heart attack. And once you have four cups or more, it's through the roof. You're probably at some point in your life, if you habitually do this, going to have a heart attack if you're a slow metabolizer. Caffeine is also a diuretic, so it's going to decrease your hydration levels. Now look, you're drinking coffee, so you're getting some hydration, but there's a diuretic in there, so you're peeing out more than you otherwise would, and so you're still gonna have a plus benefit, but if you drank the equivalent amount of water or something without caffeine, you're gonna be more hydrated, and that's of course going to help your health, and it's going to help your performance. And perhaps the most important one is the research that we shared with you in this video here on artery, I'm just gonna say artery paralysis. Artery paralysis, which means that if your arteries can't expand, you're in for trouble, my friends. You're not gonna be able to perform athletically. You're not gonna be able to recover. You could have things like erectile dysfunction, everybody's favorite topic. Now there are drugs that you can take that improve things like erectile dysfunction, and how do they work? I'm gonna share with you how you can eliminate these, maximize these, and still have your coffee. Are you ready?
All right, this is what you've been waiting for. I'm gonna tell you how you can improve your running with the use of caffeine without getting the detrimental effects. Now, here's the key. Who says that caffeine has to come from coffee? And who says that coffee needs to be caffeinated? And if we blend those two things together, you, my friend, have a very good plan. Now, in that research here that I shared with you on that Italian study that was done with the blood pressure cuff, they also compared drinking green tea. Now, green tea has caffeine in it. And subjects who had the green tea with caffeine, they did not have any ill effect to their ability to dilate their blood vessels. So, caffeine in tea is okay. So, I'm going to put a check mark. Boom. Now, you can also have decaf coffee. If you like to drink your coffee in the morning, you could have decaf. Then you get to have the flavor of the coffee and the morning ritual and you can brew it. And here's a hack for you that I don't think anybody's ever done, but you can have tea with caffeine and you can have decaf coffee. What if you made some tea that has caffeine in it and then used that to brew decaf coffee? You now have coffee with caffeine, just like you wanted, but you don't have the ill effects. Remember the research showed that there is no effect from the caffeine in tea, just in coffee, and you can still have your coffee. But there's a way that you can make this even better, and that is with nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is really gonna be the key for you here because the way that your arteries get paralyzed through either the oil or the caffeine is that those compounds inhibit your artery from being able to make and use nitric oxide. And nitric oxide is what dilates your blood vessels. Now, remember we talked about Viagra and erectile dysfunction a minute ago. The way that something like Viagra works is that it improves your body's ability to make more nitric oxide. So we really do want to be able to have a lot of nitric oxide. It's super crazy important. And in the show notes underneath in the, in the description here, I'm going to share a couple of other uh, presentations that you can watch on nitric oxide because it's that important to your health. Um, but I'm not going to go into it here. I want you to watch those because it's just going to change your life. Okay. But how can you improve your nitric oxide even? Now, Eve, I'm going to tell you this. Even if you want to take everything that I've said and throw it in the garbage and say, well, I still want to have my caffeine coffee. Okay, go ahead. But here's something that you can do to still help protect yourself. <clears throat> and that is focus on nitric oxide. Now, how are you going to make more nitric oxide? You're going to do it through one of two ways. Either, let's use a, let's use a green marker here because we're going to talk about greens. I want you to get in the habit of eating as many greens dark leafy green vegetables as many as you can and in fact the research on this shows that you want to have you actually want to have greens six times per day and the reason is because it's going to give you lots of exposures to make nitric oxide and it's going to basically make you heart attack proof but eating greens is going to improve nitric oxide other things that you can do are you can eat beets there's actually really great research on beets improving race time performance in runners and in bikers. I'm gonna to link to our video, the Run Elite video that we have that describes the research done on this. But in short, by eating beets, you are gonna run better. Now, there's also a bunch of awesome research on eating greens, especially watercress. Now, I don't think there's anything special about watercress. It's just a green, a leafy green. But this will improve your time to exhaustion on the bike and in running as well. The research is very clear and definitive on this. We're gonna link both below for you, but to, just for now, take my word for it that eating beets and eating greens are gonna improve your nitric oxide, which are gonna improve your performance, and you're not gonna get the detrimental effects from the caffeinated coffee. Pretty cool, huh?